Despite finishing fifth last season, we missed out on European football as Auxerre qualified instead by winning the French Cup. Now we have 15 million to spend to make sure we don't miss out next season. But we started by giving new contracts to cornerstones of the team, Fontan and Belich, in order to keep them at the club and deter transfer interest. To help us get ready for the new season, we also signed Pavel Nedved as a scout. Hopefully he'll find us a couple of wonder kids. Because one of our wonder kids, Bastian, is out for five months with a damaged Achilles tendon. And that brings us up to now, the 12th of June 2026 and the start of the transfer window. Now I've not played this save for about three weeks, so I am a little bit behind and confused as to what's going on. But luckily I was thinking ahead and I've written myself some post-it notes of things to do in this transfer window. Now obviously we are going to be losing on loan players Zadaka, Luam and uh, Rafa Marin. They're going back to their parent clubs. They weren't particularly good for us. We're also saying goodbye to Ahmed at the end of his contract. We're not renewing his contract and he is going to be leaving the club after a I must say, he had a pretty a pretty decent time with us. A good number of goals, a decent number of assists, but just nothing special. I'm also thinking it's time to cash in on Brian Moreno and move him out to another club. And so as a result, although Azizi Kubu was superb for us last season in the first half, once he got back from the African Cup of Nations, he was rubbish. So I think a new starting striker would be nice to bring in. I also want to look for a new right centre back as well. we've got plenty of left footed centre backs in the team but only Jesus Vallejo as a right footed one so a new guy coming in there would be great. On the bench you can see there's a gap at sub two that equates to right back so we do need to bring in a backup right back and then we've also got two spaces for backup wingers on the left and right hand side so five players at a minimum to bring in today. This post-it note also has a few of our best youth prospects to send out on loan as well so hopefully we'll get that done today too. Now we're going to start off with the striker role and we've got two options. A 30-year-old Rafael Santos Borre. He's coming to the end of his contract at Eintracht Frankfurt. He's just been out loan at Galatasaray where he scored 16 goals in 26 appearances. However, he is 30 years old. He's getting on a little bit and he's on some big wages. That is going to be the sticking point for us. The other option is to spend between £12,000 and £6 million on Dion Drenner Bellio, a superb football manager wonder kid of yesteryear. He's 24 years old in this save now. I don't don't think he's quite as good as he used to be in previous editions of the game, but I tell you what, I would love to bring him in. The downside is his goal scoring at Augsburg has not been great, but I'm sure that will translate to a good return in France. And his wages are going to be a lot cheaper, it's just we're going to pay some upfront money for him. In fact, we spoke to his agent, he wants between 14 and 16,000 pounds a week. We've not spoken to Raphael's agent yet. We're interested in signing you. How much do you want in wages? 37 to 49,000 pounds a week week. Can you bring that down? Uh, they, they say no. So I'm honest with you, I, I'm much rather interested in Dion. If we compare the two, Rafael Santos Borri is slightly better. However, we don't need them to be good at defending, so we could ignore that part of it. And mentally, Rafael Santos Borri is going to be better at 30 years old. Dion will get there as he gets older, but he does lack a bit of pace. And that is something that I think we might miss that could be his Achilles heel. However, he is the best value option that we have at the moment scouted out. So I think it's worth taking a punt. Before we make any bids though, we need to adjust our budget slightly because we're currently 15,000 pounds over the wage budget thanks to those new contracts. So let's just adjust this down towards the wages. So we have 11.2 million, but 71,000 pounds a week spare in wages. So let's put a bid in for Dion. The agent told us it's between 12,000 pounds and 6 million, which isn't particularly helpful. But I think if we start to lowball them at, I don't know, let's go 2 million, profit from next sale, remove and exclude, suggest terms. Oh, they've come back with 2.9 and 400,000 pounds after 10 league gold. Well, let's remove that. And I'm going to bring that down to 2.5 and they want a bit more money for after 50 league appearances, which he could get. How about 2.6, which they just accept outright? That seems very good. And obviously he is very interested in negotiating terms with us. So squ squad player, this man does not want to play football or doesn't think he's good enough. And that's a little bit concerning. Wait, before we do anything else, let's just quickly, 
quickly compare him with Aziz Yakubu. And Dion's better than Yakubu, apart from speed and physicality, but he'll get there a little bit as he gets older. Maybe not quite as fast as Yakubu, but he'll definitely get there physically and better in other areas. So yeah, this is a sensible move, but you know, I'm happy to say squad player to keep him happy because if he then starts playing more football than he needs, then that's good. 16 and a half thousand pounds a week. Can we bring that down to 15? Bring the appearance fee down to three and then bring the goal bonus down. And keep the goal bonus that is actually at two and a half. Uh, a new substitute fee at two on a four year deal instead. Suggest he wants more money, obviously. Well, can we get this down instead? Keep the 16 and a half, get the appearance fee down and the unused substitute fee down. He likes that four year deal sorted. I think that might be the signing of the entire series so far. And just like that, Dion is here. Accept that so he can be our new starting striker this season. It also makes sense to maybe try and sell Brian Moreno now as well. So ask Agent at market interest. We are, let's say keen right now, He's got nothing, apparently. Great. Well, let's offer him out via the transfer room then for, let's go for, he's valued between three and four. So let's go three and a half million. Now for our backup right back spot, I want to bring in Justin Che, currently playing at St. Louis City in the MLS. Valued at 3.6 million pounds on a pretty cheap contract. I think he could be the one. First of all, he can play right wing back, but also play at center back too if needed, which is quite nice to have that versatility. But if we compare him to a Estevez, who of course is our number one and we're going to start, he's not that far behind really. They are very, very similar players and we love what Gonzalo does, so I think we'd love what Justin does. Also, he won't be classed as a foreign player because he's also got German nationality, which is lovely, and apparently already speaks good French as well as fluent Danish, Dutch, Russian, German and English. What has this man been doing all his life to learn that many languages? He's got a 3.6 million pound release fee clause, which we'd have to trigger, but also it's a pretty cheap contract. So let's trigger that release fee clause and get it sorted. They want him back on loan. Uh, no, we need him this season, I'm afraid. He's got less interest in joining West Brom and Auxerre, so hopefully that means he's going to sign for us. Starting as a fringe player, moving up to a squad player, then regular start. I'm going to just remove that, although it might actually happen if we end up losing Gonzalo Estevez at some point down the line. Is he happy with that? He is actually, which is quite nice. Wants a little bit more money than I thought he was going to at £20,000 a week, but let's get rid of that yearly wage rise and bring some of these appearance fees down from six to £4,000 a game. Clean sheet can stay as it is. We don't get too many of those. Unused substitute fee has got to come down to 3000 and let's put him on a five-year, no, four-year deal, four-year deal. It's not like tied down with him for too long. Suggest that he wants a bit more money per week in wages to get the appearance fees down a little bit. Let's go four and a half in appearance fees. He won't play that much. Unused substitute fee back down to £3,000. Suggest he's happy. So am I. Done. I think our next priority is the wings on both sides. They're of a higher importance to me right now than a centre-back because we do have some cover there. It's just we don't have many right-footed players who can play in that position. So starting with the right wing, Vaclav Cerny is going to be a cheaper option. He's currently at Troyes in this division and has been playing as a backup player for them this season with 13 starts and 15 substitute appearances. As an inside forward on attack, he's all right. Like There's nothing incredible about him but he's better than Ahmed was. And if we're improving the backup, I think that's okay by me. Somewhere between 250,000 pounds and 2.6 million. The wage is a little bit high. Can you bring that down? They say yes, but not by a huge amount. Let's put a million pounds on the table and then profit from next sale, remove and exclude. Suggest they want two, geez, it's gonna be more expensive than I thought. Let's get rid of, get rid of that and say 2.7, which they accepted immediately. That's a little bit concerning. Well, I've done it now. Finalize the deal, get it sorted. But you can see other players that we've also got scouted outright. I mean, I'd love to bring in Luca DeAndre from West Ham, but 33 million pounds max asking price is a lot of money. Matthews down here, I'd love to bring him in, but 23 million pounds is just too much money. Oh, he would be a dream though, wouldn't he? Although he'd be competing for a starting spot with Anan, and I think I prefer Anan anyway. On the other side though, I would love to bring in Angel Alarcon from Barcelona. The issue is he's at 12 million pound valuation, so this would have to be a loan deal, I think. Obviously to be an inverted winger on support, he's got such great attributes for it. And I suppose if we wanted to, with 14 finishing as well, could play as an inside forward. It would be nice maybe to try and get a future deal with this. So if we go to make an offer, go to loan, they want 
a lot of money. Oh my word, it's a lot of money. They want us to pay £300,000 a month if he plays or 650000 if he doesn't. Plus his wages as well, which we can afford. That looks like it's going to be between 4.3 and 8.75 million for the season. Then they want an optional future fee of 10 million, which is a little bit higher than I wanted. And a bonus if we qualify for the Europa Conference League, which I kind of want to get rid of. I think the demands here are too much. I'm going to try and bring this down. So let's get rid of that bonus on the Conference League. Uh, important player is f mm, squad player <laughs> inside inverted winger. Already they're going to hate that, aren't they? Bring this optional future fee down to six million, and then I have to pay all his wages. But we've got to get these down to like I don't know, 150, 150 and 300, and that brings the loan actually down by quite a significant amount. If we suggest it though, they are just not going to like it. Uh, <laughs> They come back and want even more money in monthly playing fees now. I think we may come back to him later in the window if we can make some big sales. In the meantime, let's offer a contract to uh, Cerny, actually, on the other side of the pitch. Squad player is fine by me. He wants £25,000 a week. Let's get that down to, like, 20. Appearance fee is going to take a hit to, like, four and a half. And unused substitute fee down to three. On a three-year deal, that works for me. Maybe we push the agent fee up a little bit to get him to accept that. Suggest... He wants more money. That's frustrating. 21, 4.5, 3K. Suggest he's not going to budge on this. Let's go to like 23 and a half, 5 and 3. He's just not budging at all in the slightest. Maybe we leave the wage as it is. We can get these down to 4 and a half and 3. And he accepts that at least. But I think he'd be a good backup for us. Mostly because I want to keep Anan playing frequently to unlock his full potential. So I guess now we kind of just sit back and relax for a couple weeks and just see how the market moves. Moreno wants to cut his asking price as well. Okay, let's discuss the issue with Moreno. What do you think is a fair price? He says 3 million. Uh, we lifted it at three and a half, didn't we? Three million is fine. If we get three million for him, that would be amazing. So transfer, offer via transfer room, three million pounds and see if anything comes back. It didn't before at three and a half. I'll be honest, I don't think we're going to get much for him at all. Although I've just seen a little red icon pop up for a transfer news item. Oh, it's Orcs there bidding for Joel Emmanuel Koulibaly. Of course, our youngster that we brought in. I thought we spent, how much did we spend on him? 2.2 million from rent. No, we're not selling him for that amount of money. He's ours for the future. Oh, and apparently some clubs are chasing Bray and Moreno, but for 1.6 million. Can we talk to his agent now and say we're keen? He says there's nothing happening, right? In that case, let's go to the intermediaries and they say they can get between 2.5 and 2.7 million. We'll go with this guy's got slightly less percentage. It's not going to make much of a difference, to be fair, on such low transfer fees. But we'll take every penny we can get. Sporting want Gonzalo Estevez for £17 million, rising to 18.75. He's valued at 27.5. Um, that's the asking price you've set. Oh, OK. Well, let's... I'm going to reject it first and foremost. It's not enough for me. Did we make him a promise? We did. Ah, so 27.5 million is the agreed selling price with Gonzalo Estevez. So we'll keep it at that. Vaclav Cerny is here. I think I'm probably messing up the pronunciation because there are quite a few uh, accents on top of some letters. But he's going to be a good backup for us this season. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do off the bench. It also weakens some of our competition as well. Oh, and it's Las Palmas who make a bid for Brian Moreno. 2.6 million. I think if we try and negotiate that, they're going to go a bit crazy. So I'm just going to accept it. 2.6 is good. Particularly when we only bought him for £500,000 as well. It's not quite the £12 million that we need to bring in that guy from Barcelona though. Oh, I tell you who would be good though. Lenny Yoro. He'd just fit into our backline perfectly. French, 20 years old. 11 to 30. We just need... We need to sell someone for £25 million or make £25 million pounds to bring him in and bring the guy from Barcelona in. To be fair, we do have some players worth a lot of money. I mean, Anan is worth 49 to 56 million. We paid, how much we paid for him? 2.3, right. Can someone just please buy him actually for 50 million? That would be amazing. I don't want to offer him out though to upset him because that, that wouldn't be great. Gonzalo 27 and a half, Fontan 21 to 23, Marsa 20 to 22, Koba is 19 to 21. Marsa's wanted actually. Marsa is wanted. Now, ugh. He is our best player, but we could bring in two really good players if we then sold him, right? And actually, we wouldn't be lacking too much because Jose Fontana, who plays left back for us, is actually 
really, really good as a left centre back. He's got the height for it, the marking, the passing, the tackling. The only thing that sort of lets him down a little bit is the heading and the jumping reach. But I could overlook that. I mean, they are so, so similar. So maybe Marsa is sold. First of all, though, I am going to ask Marsa's agent and see if there's any... <laughs> he says no one's interested in buying him right now. There literally is. Real San Sebastian think he'd be a good fit for their current squad and Cologne are looking to generate funds as they lack the money right now. I'm going to offer him out. I'm going to say 25 million. And Everton come back with four point... What? Everton, why are you lowballing me here? Luckily, he's not actually too fussed about going there. He'd rather go to this club in Saudi. Now, if we could get a Saudi club interested here, money all day. Let's reject that, but we will accept Bren Moreno leaving to go to Las Palmas. A couple more bids being made for Marsa. Nisa coming in with seven to 10 million pounds. That's not good enough, reject that. Sunderland here though are making a bit of 14 million. This is negotiable. So we could try and get the money, but he's not interested in talking to Sunderland here. Okay. Can we just suggest 25 million? And they say 15.5. Right, okay. So this is... What about 22 and a half? They would say 17. I think we can get to 21 and a half here. And then they've... Oh, they've locked in 17, rising to... two. Okay, basically it's 20 million. All right, let's accept this. And just see where we can get with this. Oh, I totally forgot about Justin Che. Uh, it's taken a while, but he is here to join us. Fantastic. Welcome to the club. So that now leaves us with four and a half million to spend. And apparently 2.6 below the wage. But how's that gone down so quickly? Even more reason to try and sell Marsa right. Offer via the transfer room. 25 million. I'm going to try, we're going to try and do this. Ask his agent. Uh, he thinks Udinese are going to make a bit around 25 million. Okay, invite them in. Although it's now been a few days and nothing is, is coming through. Udinese, are you, are you going to make this bid or not? Because I'm kind of relying on you bidding 25 million. People want him, but apparently not Udinese. It's going to be more like a 20 million pat. In fact, tell you what, transfer. Offer via transfer room. Can we go to... 21 million. As long as we make 20 million pounds off him, that would... Where's this 25 million Udinese that I was promised you were going to give me? They're locked in. We can't negotiate these at all. So let's reject both of them. And let's put an offer down for like 18 and a half. And hopefully that will be negotiable and we can work it up a little bit. See? Perfect. Now, Borussia Dortmund have bid 18.5 million. Wolves also making a bid for 17.25, rising to 19. It's actually quite a low ball up front. So I'm going to reject that. And then going back here, let's just reject the 10, 11, and 11. And talk to Dortmund and try and push this up to 21.5 million, which they instantly reject. That wasn't ideal. Uh, let's now go back to the transfer room and say 21 and a half million. Udinese make a 30 million pound bid. No, we can bid this up. I'm, I'm sure we can bid this up, especially as Marsa has rejected the offer from Sunderland, which I was kind of banking on a little bit. However, maybe that is as good as we're going to get. Let's do 20 million again. So now the 1st of July, Ahmed has just left the club as has uh, Brian Moreno. So actually that might help out with our wages. Oh yeah, 50,000 pounds in wages free now, that's good. Torino want master on loan. We're not getting the... Are we gonna have to settle for like 18 and a half if we want to let him go? Or do we actually... I mean, look how many clubs want him, my word. Jeez. A lot of them just don't have the funds right now though. What does an intermediary say? He says he's not going to get any more than 20 million. Maybe we just leave it a couple weeks. But we are we are banking on selling him for a lot of money. Saying that, we had other players who had uh, interest in them. Gianluca Busio, although I do want to keep him. Union Berlin don't have the money for him right now anyway. Vallejo is wanted, but again, Tuar don't have the money. Basically, no one's got any money right now at all. No one wants Tommy Doyle. Arnie Mayer, no one's got the money for him. And to be fair, he's not as valuable. It's, it's master we have to sell for the money. We've got 4 million. The release fee clause for Alarcon is 12. We've got to pay that 12 million pounds up front. So we can't get him now. But Lenny Yoro, how much do they actually want? We are very interested. They say 9.8 to 
The contract is pretty reasonable. Can you bring it down a little bit? They say yes. I'm thrilled about that. So can we do a deal here, Lenny? Transfer, make an offer. Oh, not an inquiry. Uh, can we withdraw the transfer offer and then actually make an offer? Can we say £4 million up front, which is what we've got, and then add in instalments over the next three years of another £6 million for £10 million total? What do you say to that as we get rid of percentage profit from next sale? They, they want more. See, it would be cheaper to do overall up front but we don't have that money right now. It's got to be four up front now. And then 12 down the line? They, oh my God, they like that. It is 16 million though. Thing is, this kid is good. This kid is very good. Only 20 years old. Compare him to Jesus Vallejo. He is almost as good as him defensively and mentally. We'll get better because only 20, like this guy's better in my eyes right now. And we could sell for a lot of money down the line, I'm sure. We are overpaying a little bit, but, you know, I'm sure he'll pay back dividends. Cobra now wants an improved contract. Not now, Cobra. This is the worst. Well, it's not. It's probably the best time to ask, actually, because it's in the middle of the summer and we've got money to throw around. We don't right now, though. Discuss it with Cobra. Can we just say that the club can't afford it right now? <sighs> he, wants, he wants this new contract. Look, we've got age until the season starts. What we'll say to him, earn it on and off the pitch. He's now going to come to the result. Okay, that may be not the best choice of things to do there but saying that he's got three years left on his deal so hopefully within three seasons he'll be happy enough to sign a new contract brighton apparently want to sign Marsa, and they are going to spend up to 25 million pounds but bids coming in are currently not good enough udinese 12 million pounds locked in reject that again the saudi club wants him can we get you up to 22 and a half million i mean you've got saudi money come on no, they just reject that immediately. What about Wolves? They've put 14 and a half on the table, 22 and a half million suggest. They say 16, take it or leave it, we'll leave it. Wait, what? Follow up on your interest in Lenny Yoro. I understand you've opened negotiations. I would urge you to improve the offer if you're serious about getting the deal over the line. I thought we already had an agreed deal here. Transfer status. What? Did we get rejected? Or did I just never put this bid in? This is... I'm very confused here. I thought we agreed to four million pounds up front and then we do, hang on, inst installments. We would do another, was it 12 we'd said in the end? Suggest that's now not good enough apparently. Unacceptable. What? I mean, I'll look back at editing and find out what I've done wrong because obviously something along the way has gone wrong. But I, that's the only news item we have about Lenny Yoro. So I've just reviewed the footage whilst editing and it's my fault obviously. The offer did go green, they had accepted the terms, but after I saw that, I clicked on his profile to look at him and compared him with some players, never went back onto the transfer screen to press accept on our side, and so the bid was then cancelled because of that, or never actually put in the first place, which means we never actually got the chance to offer him a contract. After this point, a bit of a spoiler, obviously you've seen the demands have gone up, and Real Sociedad get him for about £30 million later on in the video. If we had put our bid and had it accepted, and Sosiva came in as well, I think he would have gone there anyway because they're a bigger club than us right now. But it is frustrating that it's my fault that we didn't have the chance to compete with him in the first place. Apologies, I am an idiot. More bids from Saudi, other clubs for Marsa, not good enough. Everton though are making a 10 million pound bid up front and then down the line it gets to 20. This is more reasonable. Can we do 17 and a half and then installments of maybe five to get to 23 plus two down the line 20 games that's 25 million pounds total plus 20 percent of profit from next sale suggest they reduce that down it's still around 25 million pounds it's just that we get you know what now we need we need at least 15 up front don't we to get a lark on in so can we reduce the installments to 8 million. 15 up front, 8 million. I would accept that. Also, the board are very keen to qualify for the Europa Conference League this season. If we don't match that, we could be in trouble by the end of the season, you know. Back to Lenny Yoro, though. Lille have rejected the bid. If we make that to 12.5 million, they just, it's unacceptable. Right, well, let's cancel this for Yoro right now. We'll come back later on. Ah, uh, and here comes more money. 
Borussia Dortmund making a £26 million total bid for Marsa. Right, can we get this up to, I don't know, 20 million up front, five down the line, get rid of that 50 game thing. So that's 25 million pounds total. Less than what we're actually wanting, but we want more up front. Profit from next sale, 20%. Suggest they're happy with that immediately. Great. That's a better offer than Everton, actually. We are guaranteed more money from Dortmund as well. 25 is guaranteed. It's only 23 guaranteed from Everton. You know what? I might do it. I'm just going to reject Everton. I'm just going to do it. Maybe this is why we couldn't get the bid accepted for Lenny Yoro. Real San Sebastian have made an £18.5 million bid rise into 24. Okay. Well, Lenny might be off the table then. That's actually really annoying. That's... <laughs> And now I'm less keen to sell Marsa to Dortmund uh, because we can't get Lenny Yoro. But I think it's the right thing to do. I think we speculate to accumulate, although we're, we're gaining money to... I, I mean, we signed for £2.9 million. Pounds. We're making so much money off him. I think we'll be fine without him. Let's accept it. So now we have £25.5 million pounds to spend. Two players on my shortlist. Uh, I guess we go for a Larkon to start off with £12 million. Pounds. Make the offer. £12 million is a release fee clause. We wanted him. Suggest the terms. Do it. It's technically the cheapest way to get him into the club. Now, I didn't notice he wanted £70,000 to £89,000 pounds a week here. That is a little frustrating. However, we are going to have to spend money to improve the team. He's only 22. He will get better. Star player is fine. You can play every week if you want to, lad. Uh, let's get rid of the improved first team coaching. And if you desperately want number seven, you can have number seven. Okay, suggest that promise. He's happy. But we have to put the contract in. Right, he's not fully convinced at joining us. So I'm going to ask my assistant manager to put something together. He says 56. I'm going to bring it down to 50. Signing on fee of 2 million. Let's push the agent fee up a little bit to get him to accept all of this. And then this is a huge contract. Is he the man to take us into the next level? You know what? He's got good consistency. He, he loves big matches. He's an excellent chemistry fit for the team. We just need to get rid of some of these other bits and, and bobs that he won't like. Bring the appearance fee down. <laughs> I think 15 grand a match is a lot of money. Oh, this could... This might not be sensible. And maybe we've spent too much money on getting Master out. Oh, if I ruin things for the club, suggest that. He just hates it. He hates every single thing about it. The maximum we can offer him is 59. 50 is my, my top bid there. I'm locking that in. So he can't ask for more money. But if, if we give you everything else, do you accept that? <sighs> no. He just wants so much. I don't think it's right to do this. I think we're bankrupt in the club if we do this. So let's walk away. Now I feel like we've sold Marsa for nothing at the moment. So we now need to spend this 25 million on some quality players. So uh, we've got a hole at left centre back. We said Fontan can move there, which means we're going to have to bring in at least another left centre back or we bring in another left back to play ahead of Vaclav which is an option, and then Jesus Valer who slots in there for now. So we do have a starting 11, which I'm very happy with. We just need to improve it. But we're entering the stage of pre-season where there are friendlies, and that's that's concerning. Maybe as a left-back, Mika Marmol comes in. Now, he is very good. Compare him with Fontan. They are so... Basically, Marmol, Fontan, and Marsa are so, so, so similar. So maybe we keep Fontan at left-back... And Marmol comes in to play left centre back. I mean, I've just now compared Marsa to Marmol, and they are literally the exact same. But Marmol costs half the money. The issue is Atletico Madrid have put a bid in for him, and that's going to be tricky. 10.25 million minimum fee release clause suggests that. Let's get that sorted. He's got the same interest in joining Wolves, Betis. Doesn't say anything about Atletico. You can be an important player. You can play ball playing defender. We'll teach you French as well. We won't improve the staff, but although we will do it at some point, suggest that he's happy. Basically, I think we give him what he wants. So if we go 25, 5,000, three and a half, maybe up the unused substitute weekly. He won't be on the bench much. I think you should like that. Ugh. 
Okay, let's just give him what he wants. And then basically we've just got the exact same centre back because as you saw, he was like the exact same as Marsa, but we've made 10 million pounds out of it. Oh, and now the players hate him because Koba wants a new contract. Okay, to keep people happy, yes, let's give Koba a new contract. Let's sort it out now. He's on £27,500 a week right now though. We're slightly interested. He wants 38 to 47. Can you bring that down? 32 to 40. Okay, great. If we can get you important player, he wants start, fair enough. Closer to 33 and a half. And just six and two. Make make it like that. You are gonna be the death of me, aren't you? 33 and a half, six and a half. He just wants what he wants, doesn't he? Let's try and get the weekly wage down a little bit. 33 and a half, keep the appearance of you as it is. My word, you are hard work. 35, deal. Not a huge increase in his wage, which is fine by me. More clubs are bidding for Mika Marmol though. So it's, it's us, Atletico and Norwich. I'll be honest, I think he's going to Atletico. Unless then he wants him as like a squad player. Then we have a chance. Oh, and Sociedad do get Yoro. Okay, he is completely off the table then. Okay. I think there has been a bit of progress. Tarek Buchmann is a right-sided centre-back and he is better than Jesus Vallejo. Much better in terms of speed, much better in terms of physicality, much better in terms of vision, in terms of his ability to pass out from defence. Not as good mentally, but he's only 21 years old. Not as good defensively, but he's only 21 years old. Will get better. I think what we need to do is wait to see what Mika Marmol does, and that will give us either 25 million to spend or 10 million to spend, and then we need to work out who we're bringing in on the left-hand side of the wing. That was a very weird way to say it, left-hand side of the wing. Ah, well, that was very quick. Uh, Mika Marmol is going to Atletico Madrid, rejecting bids from us, Burnley and Norwich. So let's go back to Buchmann, make an offer of, let's say, it's between 5.8 to 7 million. Let's say 6 million pounds, right? Suggest that they just say yes immediately. Contract-wise, he wants to be an important player. Let's say regular starter. He's happy with that. 24,000 a week, can we go to 20,000 a week just to get that down a little bit? Appearance fee to four, clean sheet to three, five year deal, suggest he wants more money, obviously. 22, four, and three. Players hate negotiating this year, don't they? They just do not enjoy it. Let's say 24, 4.2, 3.2. And there's a deal. And in he comes, Tarek Buchmann. Is he American as well? Information, uh, Tongalese. It just sounds like a very American name, Tarek Buchmann. Or Togalese, I should say, not Tongalese, Togalese. Anyway, he's in, wonderful stuff. Uh, let's get him registered into the team, sort that out quickly. Uh, also, let's ask Etting Green to welcome to the club as well. And I'm really waiting for some scout reports just to finish and come through because there are a few young left wingers who look good. One of them is this guy, Daniel Bassi. And I love his pace and his dribbling. He looks so good because he can run with the ball fast and can put a decent ball in the middle. But I need to know if he's worth comparing with Rocco. We don't have all the information about him yet. As in the meantime, there is technically a £29.5 million bid on the table for Gonzalo Estevez. And he wants to join them. Now, if I... Re I want £27.5 million up front. I think if I reject this, he's going to get cross. But I am going to reject it. And is he cross with me? He is not. Okay, we seem to have an understanding, but it's 27 and a half million up front. Oh my word, we've got like two weeks until the start of the season now. I do not feel ready. I am being told about this left back, Samuel Dahl, 23 year old Swedish from Hoffenheim. We can afford him, he's got no transfer interest. I think though, if we compare him with Fontan, for example, although actually saying that, it might be better to compare him with, where is he? Estevez down here, because he's the wing back that we just love. He, he's so good. So we need to compare a wing back to a wing back and actually Samuel Dahl is on a very similar level to Estevez. So you're an option. But there were a couple of other left backs that came through on some scout reports recently that I want to get a further look at before we make any decisions. I just don't know what's taking them so long here. And Jeremiah is the other left winger. I look at him now though, I know he's not gonna be as good as, uh, who is he on this list? Daniel Bassi at the bottom. Yeah, he's not as good. If we compare Bassi to Mitrovic, they're as good as each other. There's an argument to say that going forward, Bassi is maybe better than Mitrovic because he's more physical, he's got better technique. 
But as an overall player, Mitrovic slightly better. But of course, Bassi's only 21 years old. Wants a very small contract as well. I think, you know what? I think it's worth it. 3.7 to 5.6. Let's go 4.2 million, shall we? And do they like that? They don't like it. They want £7 million total. If we go to £5 million, they want £7 million. If we go to £5.5 million, they say yes. He wants to be an important player. I think we may go... Can we, can we get a squad player? Oh, he's happy with that. Amazing. And then the contract itself, yeah, it is pretty small in the grand scheme of things. Let's just try and get the bonuses down a little bit. Do you let's give him 12 just because we got rid of some bonuses and whatnot. Does he like that? No, of course he doesn't like that. 15, 3, and 1. <laughs> Please, just accept my bid of 15, lads. Lads, 15 is what I'm offering you, finally. So in he comes for five and a half million, Daniel Bassi. Won't start immediately given he's had no pre-season with us. But the season has now started with PSG Montpellier and we still don't have a first choice left back. I'm just waiting on this scout report for Aaron to finish. He looks good. We just need to get a full report to decide if he's better than Samuel Dahl. And then we can go for one of them. Alternative, we could go for both really and get rid of Vaclav, but... You know, we have to be careful. But I just don't want to rush into it. And we've now got the Lille game. So, unless the scout report comes through right now, which it hasn't, that is going, yep, yeah, to be that in the transfer window. At least for the transfer special. There is still business to be done. Do I think we have improved the team? Well, Bukeman is an improvement on Vallejo. And Fontan is not quite as good as Marsa. However, he's, he's almost there. There's not a whole lot of difference. But then, of course, uh, Vaclav right now is a downgrade on Fontan at left back. So overall, <laughs> the, the same? I don't know. We've made no changes to the midfield, so I guess we're the same there. But I think we have improved up front with Dion. And we've got better backups on the wing. So we are better going forward as a whole. I mean, get a better left back in and we're sorted. I think we have made improvements to the team, but maybe not quite the sweeping ones we wanted to. Had we been able to bring in Lenny Yoro, wow, that would have been a whole different story. Pre-season preview has us in eighth place. I think potentially one or two signings could get us up there a little higher. But 50 to 1 is not that far away from 33 to 1. So still more business to be done. I guess we'll come back in the next episode to finish it off.